Hello everyone and welcome back to the 1972 World Chess Championship match between Boris Vasilyevich Spassky and Robert James Fisher. Uh, now if you've been with us so far you know that the result is uh, 10 and a half to 7 and a half so Fisher is still 3 points in the lead and even though uh, most of the previous games were extremely combative and Spassky really tried uh, his best, uh, he's really playing much better than in the ha first half of the match, uh, still uh, it is without success and uh, a, lo a lot of the previous games were drawn. Uh, but as the games are very fierce uh, on the board, uh, the war of the board is still going on. Uh, Mr. Richard Stein, who was the legal representative of Mr. Chester Fox, uh, has arrived in Iceland, as we've already mentioned, and he came to Bobby's uh, hotel, uh, even though uh, Bobby was sleeping, uh, but he wanted to inform him that they will be suing him for $1,750,000. That's uh, approximately... Uh, the amount that uh, Mr. Chester Fox will lose because um, Fisher does not allow uh, any of the games to be filmed. Uh, for now, they've only uh, been allowed to, to film Game 1 and Game 8. So that's really only two games. That's really not, not a lot. Uh, and it's... Um, well, uh, <laughs> the Icelandic Chess Federation uh, will have to deal with that as he already filed a lawsuit uh, in, in Iceland. Uh, but for the other half of the prize, uh, the 50,000 pounds that were contributed to the prize fund by James Slater, uh, for that, uh, Mr. Uh, Richard Stein will have to go to, to Britain and uh, file a lawsuit there as well. Uh, but Fisher was not very impressed by this, and he didn't even get up. Uh, he was still just sleeping, and uh, uh, I guess he decided to deal with this later after the match. But it's interesting, uh, as uh, Richard Stein said, he did not want, uh, a after Fisher wins this, game, wins this match, and he, he most likely will, as he's, uh, I mean, still three points in the lead. He doesn't want uh, the prize fund to disappear somewhere in, in a Swiss bank account while uh, Mr. Chester Fox uh, needs uh, his money. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, it's really, I guess it's really hard to play a match when uh, even if you know that uh, after you win the match over the board uh, and win all that money, uh, your assets, your bank account, everything will be frozen. And, uh, I mean, what will you do? Uh, but still, Fisher was not very impressed, and um, he just uh, wanted to play the game. Uh, also, uh, the uh, Fisher's uh, advocate, uh, Mr. Fred Kramer, uh, also again filed uh, an appeal that uh, the first 2,050 seats be removed and that no one is allowed to sit there. Uh, but as Fisher again didn't sign this, uh, Lothar Schmidt simply disregarded it and... Uh, uh, but he, he was also lucky because uh, it was a it was a very nice Sunday, you know, a really sunny day in Reykjavik, which uh, really doesn't happen a lot. Uh, so a lot of people went outside, and not all that many people even came to this game. Uh, so that's you know a, a bit luck for both of them, as um, <laughs> uh, all of the all of the seats were available in the front rows, so that uh, suited uh, the Soviets. But no one sat there, which suited Fisher's side. So, uh, that being said, uh, some backstory <laughs> before we start the game. Uh, Spassky has the white pieces and he opens with e4, uh, as we've already mentioned. And Fischer, uh, like in the 13th game, goes for the Aljehen's defense with knight to f6. Uh, but as uh, a theme of this match has been that Fischer will not repeat a same line of the opening twice, uh, it will be interesting to see what he goes for in this game. Uh, we have e5, knight to d5, d4, d6, and now comes knight to f3. Uh, and okay, uh, in the 13th game, uh, he played g6, and for this game, Fischer played bishop to g4. Spassky obviously prepared something as he did lose this game uh, with the white pieces, so he, he brought something new uh, for this game. Uh, but Fischer doesn't want to repeat, he goes for bishop to g4, and okay, bishop to e2. Uh, we have e6, uh, castles by Spassky, and now bishop to e7, and here h3. Uh, this is uh, h3 is sort of a new move here uh, prior to this game uh, in this position. e captures and d6 was played, the c4 was played, uh, but Spassky wants to make uh, use of this h3 move as it uh, will be played sometimes in the future. So now he, he wants to play it without spending time as it comes with an attack against the bishop on g4. Uh, we have bishop to h5. Uh, and only now c4, knight to b6, and now knight to c3. Uh, Fischer castles, we have bishop to e3, and now comes d5. Uh, a very nice move by Fischer, he doesn't want to allow knight to c6. Uh, if he continues development, then captures, captures, and the d5 is coming. Uh, and uh, he, he doesn't like this position for black, and he shouldn't. It's, it's uh, you know too much space grabbing for white. 
uh, after bishop to e3 we have d5 fisher closes this position uh, and he wants to uh, achieve this uh, french like structure uh, c5 may be coming also at some point uh, but with one important difference that his light square bishop is already nicely developed on h5 unlike in the french where you have to figure out what to do with it later uh, and here we have c5. Uh, also a possibility for Spassky was b3, which takes away the a4 and c4 squares for Fischer's knight, uh, but he prefers c5. And now, uh, after this pawn has been pushed to c5, uh, Fischer decides to take away this uh, knight on f3, as it's a very important defender of the d4 and d5 squares. So bishop captures on f3, and here we have bishop captures on f3. Uh, if you try something like c captures on b6, like an in-between move, it will be a very hard to uh, to actually do something with white here after bishop captures pawn captures on c7 uh bishop captures on d1 pawn captures uh, with a promotion to a queen rook captures on d8 and now rook f captures on d1 it's not really something uh, uh you, you can push for more than a draw here uh, with the white pieces and spassky really does need a win so bishop captures on f3 and now comes knight to c4 uh this entire french like structure with black and this um whole setup is not uh, is not something new uh fisher actually took it uh, from the uh, women's world chess championship match uh that was played between uh ala kushner and the nonaga prindashvili in 1969 uh but in that game um uh, knight to c8 was played a move with the knight back but here fisher goes for knight to c4 uh, and okay, Spassky, after uh, giving the position some consideration, decides to go for b3. He forces knight captures a bishop, uh, but this will give him a semi-open f file. So okay, we have knight captures on e3, f captures on e3, and now b6. Uh, Gligorich mentions that the, this, this b6 move, uh, it seems like black is doing perfectly fine, but white is still ahead in development, and he's, he says that perhaps Fischer is reaching for too much here with this b6 move. Uh, but okay, uh, Spassky goes e4, and he shows that Fischer now definitely does have to deal with this, and that he doesn't have time to play uh, whatever he wants on the queen side, as uh, e captures on d5 is a pretty big threat, the pawn, the knight, and the bishop uh, are attacking the d5 square, and also by playing b6, Fischer opened up this diagonal from the bishop to the rook. Uh, so he has to close it. c6, and now comes uh, b4. Uh, if you try e captures on d5 immediately, then after c captures and b4, you will get this knight to c6 move. Black gets a very nice development. Uh, the knight comes into the game with tempo, and uh, all, all is well for black. So after c6, we have b4 immediately by Spassky, and now b captures on c5. b captures on c5, and now queen to a5. Uh, Fischer doesn't like the calm knight to d7, so he wants to play actively he develops the the queen uh, while attacking the undefended knight on c3 and here uh, is a position that a lot of players uh, have uh, dwelled on over <laughs> over the years uh, in this position as the knight is attacked spassky decided to play knight captures on d5 uh, and a lot of uh, a lot of people said that it was um, uh, there were much better moves here uh, for example, a move like queen to e1 was mentioned, and uh, now def this definitely is a threat, because now knight captures on d5 uh, comes with an attack on the queen, but also threatening knight captures on e7 with check. So uh, a lot of problems for black to deal with. Uh, so after black plays something like the queen back to d8, only now... Uh, black wastes two moves which is not something you want to do in a world chess championship match so most likely this would not be played uh, and uh, it would be it would definitely be an improvement here uh one, one one idea black might go for is bishop captures on c5 after pawn captures queen captures with check king to h1 d4 black already gets a nice pass pawn and perhaps he can uh, create some complications here uh, but the queen to e, queen to e1 definitely would be a nice move, and they said that uh, this would in fact have been better. Uh, but uh, Kasparov, for example, in his uh, fourth volume of the book *My Great Predecessors*, uh, says that knight captures on d5 is not a problem uh, because, uh, well, there is a reason to this. Uh, now the knight cannot be captured. If c captures, uh, then e captures, pawn captures, bishop captures. Uh, I mean, you have three connected pawns in the center, two of them are passed pawns, and uh, the bishop is already attacking the rook on a8. There's no way to defend it or block it. You have to give up the knight, so after bishop captures, it's not really uh, a peace sacrifice at all. d5 is coming, and white uh, white is winning here. Uh, on the other hand, after knight captures on d5 by Spassky, uh, the other uh, idea is e captures on d5, but it's not that much better. After e captures on d5, knight d7, for example, you try to develop, now comes d6 uh bishop to g5 
uh, and then now comes the bishop captures on c6, attacking the rook and the knight. Uh, rook blocks, uh, rook defends knight, bishop captures, rook captures, and now c6. Uh, and again, white will be very much winning here because these pa pass pawns are simply monsters. Uh, but there is one move that makes uh, knight to d5 uh, not so great, and it is the move Fisher played. Uh, and that is bishop to g5. And now, after Fisher played bishop to g5, you realize that uh, the bishop is controlling uh, a lot of the squares that knight can use to retreat. So th the knight cannot use any of these squares to retreat. Uh, and as you can see, the queen is guarding the knight from the other side of the board. So all of these squares are taken by the bishop and all of these squares are guarded by the queen. So the knight has no retreat squares now. Spassky has to figure out how to get his knight uh, out of here. Uh, and uh, here Spassky played bishop to h5. He wastes one move by moving the bishop. Now he frees the f4 square. Uh, the rook is now guarding f4, so the, this retreat can now be played. Uh, but uh, Kasparov, in his My Great Predecessors, uh, says that this is, in fact, uh, the move that uh, Spassky could have played, played better. Knight to d5 is not the problem. Here, instead of bishop to h5, Kasparov suggested queen to d3, uh, and uh, Kasparov gives the variation knight to a6, uh, and after that, h4. Uh, at this pawn sacrifice, bishop captures on h4, and now the knight can retreat on e3. Uh, but later it was, um, uh, f uh, later they found that after Kasparov's idea, queen to d3, you can actually go for e captures on d5 and grab the knight. Uh, e captures, and now knight to a6. And now after d6, you will have this knight captures on c5. Uh, pawn captures, queen captures on c5 with check uh, king to h1, and now uh, rook to e8, and that black will uh, again be all right here. But, you know, it's not all that uh, really important because it's important what the players played over the board in 1972 in this game 19, uh, not what, uh, you know, a lot of uh, really strong players found post-mortem and uh, what the engines say about this position today. Uh, but okay, after this bishop to g5 move by Fischer, we have bishop to h5 by Spassky now forcing uh, Fischer to capture the knight. Uh, we have uh, pawn captures on d5, and now comes bishop captures on f7, a very important move. Uh, rook captures, rook captures, and now uh, Fisher cannot recapture here. If king captures here, then queen capture, queen to h5 is winning, uh, whatever black plays. Uh, if you move the king, then queen to e8 will be checkmate. Uh, if you block with g6, then comes uh, queen captures on h7 with check. King e8, queen captures on g6, king d7, and e captures on d5. It's... Uh, Completely winning position for white. Uh, you can simply start by capturing here. The rook can come to b1 to f1. Uh, you can go uh, all the way up and uh, deliver checkmate this way. Uh, and uh, lastly, but of course not leastly, after queen to h5, if the king simply moves, king to e7 or something, uh, you will simply play queen, queen captures on g5 and uh, then again continue the king hunt. Uh, or if he doesn't, if he goes, for example, to f8, again, it's the same thing. But now first you bring the rook into the game. Rook f1 check. King moves, and now again you start a very nice king hunt. King moves, uh, uh, queen f8 check, king c7, rook f7 check, knight has to block, queen d6 check, king b7, rook captures, king to c8, and now you will deliver checkmate after queen to c6. King moves, and rook to b7 uh, will be checkmate. So, uh, after this rook to f7, Fisher does not have the luxury of capturing the rook. First, he plays uh, queen to d2. <clears throat> and now, because the pawn on d4 is hanging with check, uh, Spassky has no other option but to accept the queen trade. Uh, queen captures on d2 was played, we have bishop captures and only now rook to f1. Uh, the threat is now a rook to f8 check for Spassky. Uh, knight to c6, now the other uh, Fisher's rook is guarding the f8 square and here, uh, well, uh, if you look at uh, the pieces, Pasky has uh, uh, Fisher has a rook, uh, a knight, and a bishop against two rooks, so definitely black is better here, uh, but Spassky has this huge pawn formation in the center. Uh, so e captures on d5. Uh, we have e captures on d5 and now rook to d7, going after the black pawn. Uh, bishop to e3, going after the, the base of the pawn chain. We have king to h1 as the king was in check and now bishop captures on d4. Uh, e6 now, not allowing the pawn to be captured and now bishop to e5, taking away the c7 square from white's rook. Uh, we have rook captures on d5, rook to e8 now and now rook to e1. Uh, with a double attack against the bishop on e5, and now rook captures on e6. Uh, rook to d6, and now king to f7, defending. Uh, or you can try rook captures on d6, but still, after uh, c captures, uh, king, to, king to f7, now you have to find rook to c1. 
uh, the move that uh, holds. Uh, knight to d8, rook to c7 check, king to uh, e6, rook to e7 check, king captures, and now rook captures on a7, and white w white will be able to hold this. Uh, so, after rook to d6, uh, instead king to f7 was played by Fischer, and now comes rook captures uh, on c6. Rook captures and rook captures on e5. So now, after all is said and done, Spassky is now up a pawn, uh, but it's a rook end game where where you're up upon and it will very be very hard to push here for something more than a draw king to f6 attacking the rook rook to d5 and now king to e6 rook to h5 we have h6 defending the pawn king to h2 and now rook to a6 uh, and here we have c6 uh, rook captures on c6 if you play rook captures on a2 uh, of course you will see how white wins this rook to c5 uh, now there is no uh, way to prevent queening here. King d6, simply c7, captures, and white will get a queen into the game. So after c6, uh, rook captures on c6 was played. We have rook to a5, and now a6. Uh, the rook is now defending the pawn on a6. King to g3, we have king to f6. King to f3, uh, rook to c3, check. King to f2, and after rook to c2, check. Uh, the players agreed to a draw, and the Fisher is still three points in the lead after game 19. The, re the result is now 11 to 8, uh, and uh, it will be very hard for Spassky to get back into the game, uh, not not being able to convert another game with the white pieces into more it's something more than a draw. Uh, but it's not over. We'll we'll definitely enjoy more games and uh, see how it all goes. Uh, so yeah, uh, I would like to thank uh, Pascal Bruno, Christopher Payne, uh, Goran Radic, and Larry Osovsky for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, hopefully I'll see you soon with some more interesting content. And uh, make sure the first thing you will see in the description below uh, is the link to my interview uh, with uh, Shagar Shah for Chase Base, Chess Base India. Uh, so give that, uh, you know, uh, a check <laughs> as well. Uh, thank you all and I'll see you soon.